Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. Today, we are going to explore just how many possibilities there are in low tune snare drums and the fact that not all low tune snare drums are created equal. Now, when we say equal, we don't mean good versus bad, not at all, but a low tuning, that's a broad brush, and there's a lot of different sounds in music today that are definitely tuned low, but don't resemble each other at all. Now, we don't have an infinite amount of time here, so we're not going to do every single one we could think of, but we're going to do five today, and we're going to do them all on a surprising drum. The surprising drum being our Ludwig Acrylite. Not an expensive drum, not a fancy drum. It's an old drum, but these love low tunings and give us as much room as we need to be able to see just what it's capable of. Starting off, we want to do, well, give it a little listen. This is a wide open tuning. This is no muffling. This is no internal muffler, no shenanigans at all. And it's a beautiful sound. Now, since we're doing low tunings today, we are going to stay away from rim shots and stick to hitting the drum right in the center. That's the best place to live for low tuning so that we don't get too much in the overtone range and stay away from the higher parts of the sound. This is a great versatile sound that also will take to some muffling really well if you wanna do that. Let's real quick listen to the pitches on each of the heads. We're gonna consider this our starting point and everything we do after is gonna deviate from this sound. Something that we need to talk about is how crucial strike zone is when we are tuning a snare drum this low. Compared to toms, this actually affects everything about the sound of the drum and depending on where you are between the edge and the center, you're gonna get completely different results. Let's hear how this drum fares from center to edge. What this means for us as players is that we have a lot of options when the drum is unmuffled like this, and as long as we're consistent, they're all totally usable, but if you've ever heard inconsistent backbeats on a snare drum, this is where it's coming from. Additionally, if the drum is not perfectly in tune with itself, this is where you're gonna to start to discover those intonation issues and wobbly bits in the sound as you get away from the center of the drum. For sound number two, we are going to start to employ a little bit of muffling here, in this case, a rolled up bandana, and we're gonna lower the pitch of the batter head fairly significantly, as well as releasing some of the tension on the snare wires. This gets us a sound that is almost entirely wires. It sounds like a hand clap is mixed in there. It almost sounds like it's not a, like not an acoustic drum. And this is something that is all over recordings in the 70s and the 80s because it's controllable, goes in the mix in a cool way, and it's a little bit quieter than a wide open drum. This is something that we use a lot these days in singer-songwriter situations and also, I would say, 
in anything that's trying to reference nostalgic music in the pop world. When adding this amount of muffling to the batter head, it is both adding or perceiving to be adding low end to the drum, but more importantly, it is removing almost all of the attack, which means that the volume is lower and it gives us a chance to hit the drum a little bit harder to bring back some of that power and give us a broader note. The flip side of this is that because we have so much material on here, rebound is lessened and we tuned the batter head lower, which has lessened it even more. So you can't do a lot of really articulate things on here because it's not giving us much of anything back. For example, if I wanted to get a little more spicy with what I'm doing on the drum at a lower dynamic, here you can hear that we can't actually get much articulation out of it. But that's not what the point of this is anyway. This is a sound that gives us a big warm backbeat. It's not a ghost note kind of thing and it does exactly what we need it to. Up next, we're gonna remove all of this muffling and we're gonna reduce the tension on the snare side and bring in a wild card implement here. When we step away from using sticks and start to use any kind of bundle implement, we can start to experiment with not just hitting the drum in a traditional rebound oriented way. Consider the possibility of using something like a broomstick as both your implement and also as a way to muffle overtones so that you can use a low tuned wide open drum and move between an overtone filled sound and something punchy and tight similar to the previous sound. This is super fun and cards on the table. I have never tried this before and I'm having a blast with it. It's something I'm really excited to experiment with more in the future. And it actually is something you can do without having to modify your drum, like on the fly or in rehearsal or wherever you happen to be. You can do it instantly just by picking up a broom or a bundle rod or whatever you might have. One of the big gifts that we get by getting rid of the muffling in this situation is that we can actually move through a very wide dynamic range with a broomstick because there isn't already a bunch of mass on the head to muffle those overtones. Usually when I use something like a broom, I'm going into it knowing that I'm gonna be losing some articulation and losing some volume just by virtue of using that implement. With a setup like this and a little bit of adjusting to the technique, suddenly we have two drums in one in front of us that we can use in different sections of a song or just move through different things that make us happy. This is a great time to mention that while the demos today have no production on them at all, these are raw sounds, over on our Patreon, if you follow the link below, there will be produced versions of these so that you can hear how they sit in a mix with just a little bit of adjusting and sweetening up. Now having said all that, the next example you might think has some kind of production on it because it sounds so synthetic and electronic and frankly just beautifully bizarre. This example involved raising the tension on the snare side, over tensioning the wires a lot, 
and also adding a ring to the batter head to muffle the overtones. What this gets us is a amazing gated effect where the snares respond in a delayed way after the initial backbeat, and it fits in in this incredible way that doesn't even sound like a real snare drum. It actually sounds like a synthetic drum that has some kind of effect on it, but believe it or not, that sound you're hearing is exactly what it sounds like in front of me. And it even affords me the ability to listen to the rhythm of that delay and play grooves around it, almost like I have a, an echo on the drum in front of me. These are the sorts of things that we can discover just by horsing around with the tuning and making sure that we have a few muffling options around us and some different implements to use because this is still, again, it's been the Acrolyte the whole time. We've barely changed the tuning. We're staying in a pretty narrow range. And I don't know, if you asked me, I would never have guessed that these were all the same drum with the same heads and the same wires in the same room. Last but not least, because we need to touch on it, for those of you out there who really appreciate a very high tuned snare side head but also want a lower tuned sound, we have cranked the head on this as tight as I'm comfortable doing it and then experimented with what kind of tension we could get away with on the batter side and still have the feel and behavior of the drum work for us. In the end, to control some of the overtones because they are so prevalent when you tune the snare side this high, we included a little bit of gaff tape on the edge. This for us feels actually like a fairly run-of-the-mill snare sound, but it feels particularly interesting because we have the snare side so tight that we have the batter basically as low as is tolerable to be able to play on it on here, and it feels really interesting. We are not doing, again, rim shots on any of these because that's not what we're going after today. Rim shots on this drum would probably sound fine, but the sticking point with this is that because I want a fat sound, but the tight snare side head is forcing me to tune the batter this low, it doesn't feel very good to play. It feels choky, it's not giving me a lot of rebound, and I like to have a little more sustain out of the wires than this is giving me, and that's because, frankly, the snare side head is choked. So it doesn't have the opportunity to have sustain of any kind. And for me, moving through the dynamic range of a snare drum, I want it to grow as I hit it harder. And in this case, it totally sounds good, but it's kind of the same sound, whether I hit it softly or hit it hard, not to mention the fact that playing it very quietly doesn't really have the kind of articulation that I want anyway. At long last, let's hear a back-to-back -back comparison of all five of these sounds.
this is a really interesting moment here because it's very rare that any of us get to hear these totally different sounds back to back like this out of the context of a song. Usually when we're listening to drumming, there is other instruments going on along with it, and some of the overtones and some of the character of the drum disappears into that mix to give us the sound that we feel like we're hearing that we might want to go home and try to replicate on our own drums. Some of the overtones that are present in these sounds, some of the decays and different things, will completely go away as soon as there are other instruments playing, and that is part of the sounds that we love. So it's super important to remember that making a sound in front of us in a vacuum is not the same as the things that we hear on recordings or at a live show. Now that said, all five of these sounds are super useful and to me actually versatile in terms of the opportunities that they afford you in a rock context or a quiet thing or instrumental music and we got them all out of an acrylite. So that means to us that no matter what drum you have, it is worth sitting down and chasing sounds that are in your head, chasing sounds that you've heard anywhere and seeing what your drum and your knowledge of muffling and tuning is capable of. If you came into today's video thinking that you had a full, complete idea of what a low tune snare drum sound is, hopefully this has given you an opportunity to realize that that is a whole spectrum of possibility, no matter what your favorite one is right now. And it's really important for us to make sure that we branch away from the things that make us comfortable, both to appreciate our favorites more and also to find other things that are gonna inspire us. Thanks so much for coming along on this pretty deep dive today. If you like what you heard, remember to follow the link below to the Patreon. There's gonna be extra content from today's episode as well as many of our others. It's the best way to help us continue to make this show and we really appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and please tell us your low tune snare stories, especially if you have one that's your favorite that maybe uh, you know, you'll try something different out after what you saw today.